Yeah, man, it's Paco Panama, the dog father here with Taco Talk TV. What's happening? You can get ready to get right. I ain't gonna hold you in this motherfucker with Paco Panama. Paco with Taco. Hey, the first time I said that, that was an introduction, but and we really about to go up. You know what I'm saying? We just getting a little ready, bro. My man just dropped dog father. Like, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. That joint right there, it's hits. If you watching this joint, like right now, and you ain't heard that joint, but you but you trying to figure out who Paco is, like you watching the interview, I would suggest pausing real quick and just making sure that you go through and you know get situated real quick. At least take a little preview before before the interview, so you can really figure out what's going on, who we with, you know what I'm saying, how we living, all of the above. Cause you know, I ain't really going up, but hey man, say man, thanks for pressing play, man. You tuned in with the motherfucker, voice of the youth, Taco Talks TV, Paco. Panama, SJ World Films behind the camera. We really about to go up real quick. This a, we about to go up. This nah, one, you know what I'm saying? Fourth quarter interview? What? With Paco? Nah, for real. Mr. Fourth quarter. Mr. Mm -hmm. Fourth quarter, you know what I'm saying? Show them how we living real quick. I'm tuned in with the voice of the U. Taco Talks, man. Shout out Taco Talks. You got, you got some I'm CHB Top Soul, and I'm on Taco Tuesday. Yeah, Taco Talks TV. Lord do Luciano. Man, go over his Gucci gun. You see his car face in a motherfucking building. <laughs> Body murder, man. You know what it is, man. It's baby out, aka Slim Rich. Man. Why is your dick? Taco Talk TV. King of the city. Big Don Bain. I'm not rich. Pay some. Three commas, man. I'm Molly, man. It's K Pre. 3 0. It's me on Taco Talk TV. <laughs> Hey man, finally getting situated. Welcome to the party. Hope y'all hit y'all parlays, man. We in this thing with Paco Panama, man, and Taco Talks TV, man. We really about to go up. Yes, fourth sir. quarter interview. Mr. Fourth Quarter. Mr. Fourth Quarter. Hear me. SJ behind the camera. We really get it going up because, like, it's fourth quarter. Like, I feel like we, we've been yes, going up. We've been going up. Here and there, you know what I'm saying? Hitting stuff throughout the year, but like you gotta finish fourth quarter strong so they know what to look forward to for next year. And Paco Panama really just been going crazy. I think I seen the vlogs, man. We 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 was in the stew, had a super session with Plaga and Commas and Ye, you know what I'm saying? Chapo all through there, but today we here for the interview. Get the news that you could use. Real. So on Sunday you don't got the blues, <laughs> yeah me. Real. I ain't a rapper. I'm not a rapper, yeah me. Till uh December twenty fourth, yeah me? December twenty fourth. Huh? That's that's the only time I'm a rapper after that. Man, we in here with Paco Panama, man. So how did you how did you come up with the name Paco? Shit, my brother and grind but my big called me Paco since I was a baby. Okay. It was supposed to be Toco, but everybody kept messing it up. And they were saying loco, then it got the Paco, and they were just like, fuck it, we're gonna call him Paco. <laughs> so, so what was, you said it was Toco to start with? Yeah, it's like, that's my cousin name, so he was calling me after my cousin, basically. Y'all, y'all the same age? Nah, he older than me. Okay, about like a year or two or what? Nah, he older than me probably by about 10 years. Okay. But rest in peace to my cousin Toco, because he passed away in 2019. Uh, man, rest in peace to bro, man, but. Paco, man, and, and then how old was you when everybody, like, your friends was calling you Paco? My whole life. Okay, so, like, elementary school? That's my childhood school. name, yeah. Okay. That's my childhood name, all the way up to adult. Okay, respect. Like, my grandmother and my mother, they call me Paco. Okay. Who was, who was, who was Paco in D.C.? Your father? Panama. Yeah. Yeah, that's Panama. Okay. That's where the Panama come in there, cause I'm half Panamanian. Okay. Half Panamanian, half black. But my father, you know, they called him Panama, so I kind of like adopted the name, and, you know. Okay. Respect. And, and who was teaching you how to be a man since your father was locked up? My brother, in the street. Okay. Big cousins, shit like that. You I learned a lot from trial and error too. You gotta bump your head a couple times. You had a lot of cousins, uncles, that was like close in your age. Uh, cousins, you know, uncles they they older and shit, but yeah, cousins. Respect. And, and what's some of the principles and you know morals that they was teaching? Shit, I'm gonna tell you what my grandfather told me. He a lot of shit he told me stuck with me to this day. 
He used to always say, pay attention. Simple shit, but like, it just stuck with me. Wherever you go, pay attention. And he used to always say, people, places, and things. Just used to leave it like that. Yeah. When I got older, I realized what he was talking about. Yeah. And he used to always be like, don't, the streets don't love you. No matter how much you love them corners, they ain't gonna love you back. He told me that, he used to always tell me that. Rest in peace to my grandfather, too. I am so, so you coming from a long line of get her dunners. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. No, no, that shit in my blood. No, nah, for real. And, and what what was those stories like? Was you hearing stories like when you was in school or, or seeing the news or newspapers? Yeah. yeah, I seen all that shit growing up. My mother, she she tried to like hide a little bit of that shit, but you know, you when you go outside, you hear stories and shit. Seeing that, what did that do? I mean... Like, how did that affect your mind? Like, did it make you feel like... What did it make you feel like? Reading about that, it. I mean, you know, when you young, that shit y'all like excite you a little bit, but but uh, when you get older and shit, like it just teach you like which way you don't want to go. Like I'm not really trying to end up like that, but when you young, you know that shit y'all like excite you. You be like, I gotta, I gotta live up to that. But as I got older, I just was making my own name. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't living off my father's name or none of that shit. How old was you when you touched your first hundred dollars? First hundred dollars? Like that you made though, not like a gift or no shit like that. Like, look, I'm gonna keep it a hundred with you. And my, and my niggas can vouch for this shit. Fifth grade was the first time I seen crack. My man bought it to school. My cousin X. I don't know if his mother gonna see this, but he bought that shit to school. The shit was still wet. Like. That was the first time I seen it. <laughs> the shit was still wet. Like, like somebody just cooked the shit up and gave it to him and shit. Yeah. He didn't even know what to do with this shit. He just brought it to school and was showing us and shit. Yeah. Then after that, like seventh grade, we was doing like burnt out shit. We was opening up cigarettes and putting them in weed bags and selling them and just running off and shit. Damn. Yeah, we always been on some shit. You know what I'm saying? But, uh,. First time I really started touching some money, I was probably about 14. Nah, like your first hundred dollars though, like you done I was, saved up. Shit, I was, I think I, uh. Shoebox money, cutting grass, motherfucker, polishing shoes. I had my mother or something for my birthday or something. Oh, you talking about my own? Yeah, your own. Like how old was you? Cause look, I'm shit. selling chips and, and shit. It's chips and honey buns and Capri Suns and like third grade, second grade, you hear me? Yeah. Once I found out that kids was hungry and they ain't had no food, but they had money here, you could have my lunch, I'ma eat dinner. My first hundred dollars was probably like, shit, like probably, I think I was um, cleaning up in the barbershop. Okay. I was young. But I used to go there at the school a lot. And, uh, I used to be sweeping up and shit, and I saved up enough money to buy me some shoes and shit. It was like some Air Force Ones or some shit like that. Right. Yeah, but I come from that era where you was getting money when you was a teenager and you was still living with your mother. Yeah. You just had to hide clothes. I used to have to hide my shit. <laughs> what, you, <laughs> what you was coming through with, like what, where you was hiding it too, like in book bags or like? In my closet, like you gotta go deep in the closet. I know she ain't going, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or, or change my clothes when I leave the house. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cause she so, know I ain't buy you that. So like when Biggie, when Biggie had that little that shit real, like, bro. Yeah, that shit, real. I was really doing that shit, bro. <laughs> but I, I ain't had no roof. I was just hiding in my room and shit, like in the closet. You had, you had to lift up floorboards and shit. Nah, I would hide <laughs> that shit like deep in the closet. So as though I knew you she had a walk in joint. Nah, it wasn't no walk in joint. It was like that. Okay. But okay, I had okay, a lot of, okay. a lot more shit than like that. that. Yeah, okay. It was a little bit more wider okay. than that, but it shit wasn't no walking. Yeah. Blending in. Blending in, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got blending shit in.